Welcome to today's episode guys and it's a special one. We have a Thanksgiving buyer's guide and we have a special guest uh, in the house. It's Antoine from uh, New Stuff TV joining us all the way from Houston, Texas. Welcome Antoine. You want to introduce yourself and say hi to everybody? What's up everybody? I am officially in the building but not actually in the building. But either way, I'm really glad to be here to show off some new stuff for you guys. Well, it's not really new I guess. It's just my favorite stuff of the year. Yeah, that's right. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way. And we're going to be talking about some of the things we've... Well, here's the thing. Since the lockdown and everything has come up and you know, opened up, a lot of companies just started like inundating the, the market with tons of new things. And this year, you can correct me, has been super busy in terms of like the number of products we got to review. And there's just so much good stuff out there. And we wanted to weed down everything for you guys just, you know, as you head out shopping on Black Friday or Cyber Monday and we're going to talk about some of our favorite stuff and also some of our least favorite things that you should probably avoid. Do you want to start us off with uh, some of your favorite things uh, from this year in 2022? You can start with the first thing on your list. Oh, let me look at my list here. Oh, yeah. And I, got on my, a couple uh, things. I can't app. wait to get to the, like the crappiest tech of the year. <laughs> but I'm going to start yeah. off with some of my favorites here. So my favorite um, it's hard to put everything as in like a list from one to five, but I'll just start off with this. It's not the favorite. It's just one of the favorites. And I would say the uh, this these came out this year. This is the Sony WH-1000XM5 over ear active noise cancellation headphones. I did all of that in one take. Be proud of me. But yeah, these <laughs> headphones are <laughs> truly awesome. When I first got them, I was very underwhelmed um, because I just felt like it was just a different design, but is this it was the same stuff as the previous model. But after giving them a second chance, I realized that they don't necessarily sound better. They just they just move with you better than the uh, previous model. And that in turn gave me a chance to try out the Sony WF 1000 XM4 earbuds as a companion product to them. So I got the headphones and the earbuds and I put them to the test in a trip to New York, uh, I would say about a month ago. And on the flight, sitting in the airport, walking through the city of New York with real noise. I live in Houston, Texas, in the suburbs, and I don't get a lot of real noise, you know, with transit and stuff like that. But experiencing it in that environment, this is a great combo for someone who just wants to just be in their own world while you're out in the world and block out all that noise, but also have the tech of AI compensating for everything around you and you know keeping the noise out and even letting it in when it when you need it to be or when you didn't know you needed it to be like crossing the street or something like that and believe it or not that's also on top of my list in terms of headphones i don't have it on me right now but uh, the other thing i also like was actually the soundcore q45s those were pretty good right there near the top of my list is there another second headphone that you like too or this was your only one for, I guess, high end. I would have to go with the Q45s because or the Soundcore is Space Q45. That's what it is. Because the Sony WH-1000 XM5 is a, it's not top tier, but they are pretty pricey at $400, I believe. So if I was yeah. going to recommend something else, I would have to just bump it down a few, you know, $100 and go to something like the Soundcore because it's more affordable and more available for the masses. And you're getting a lot of the same quality as far as uh, music quality, uh, build quality and active noise cancellation and ambient sound. And a lot of people are on calls like this, you know, face to face, but they're, they're using headphones and the mics in those things are good. So if you got one of those jobs where you're doing Zoom and stuff all the time or Google Meets, those are really good for that. Another one that's on my list too is the uh, One More Sono Flows that at M MSRP, they were still coming down way below the uh, sound course. And I'm guessing they might do the $20 off thing come Black Friday. So probably we'll be seeing it around 80 bucks, 90 bucks, which is a really good buy. I like those two because they're very comparable comparable in terms of actor noise cancellation. I prefer the sound quality on the Sono Flow. Uh, did you get a chance to test it? I'm glad you brought that up because I got a bone to pick with one more for not let me try those out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so one more if you watch it, what? I'm watching you. The Sono Flow is amazing. I'll tell you what. I, I've I have no idea where they came from. I mean, they all, they've always made great earbuds. You know, like the piston buds and all those things. And um, but this Sono Flows, I think they took a playbook from Soundcore, like offering it cheap with a lot of features, kind of like what Soundcore used to do. Because Soundcore, if you notice, their prices have slowly crept up over the years. Uh, Soundcore is uh, one more is doing something that 
Soundcore used to do. It's cheap price, good features, good quality. So yeah, if you're on a budget, go for the uh, Sonoflows, best name ever. And if you're in the mid budget, go with the Soundcore Q45s or Q35s if you don't need some higher tech. Or if you got the budget, like Antoine said, go with the XM5s. Oh man, this this next one, it's, I don't know, man. I, I, uh, is it my favorite product of the year? Either way, I'm gonna tell you about it right now. It's one of those products that you don't know you need until you have it. And that is, let me make sure I get the name right. That is the Segway 9 by E45 electric kick scooter. It's on Amazon right now for $799. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of money for a scooter. But actually, it's not when you start getting into the scooter game. The reason I got it, I just wanted a scooter because I have a one year, well, he'll be two in January. My giant schnauzer puppy. Uh, he is still a puppy because he's not even two years old yet. But I've clocked him running at 22 miles an hour. So when he's slow, really? he's slow. But when he's fast, he's slickety slick fast. So I need to be wow. fast too. And I'm only so fast, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so the scooter comes in really handy and I've trained him to be off leash. So I just hop on the scooter and he just gallops, you know, he just gallops and just goes man through the fields and stuff. And I love playing with him on it. You know, we'll, I'll duck down and he knows it's time to race and I'll say, yeah, yeah. And he'll just keep going, man, until he just runs himself ragged. And then, you know, if he slows down, I'll slow down on the scooter and just walk beside him. But for the most part, that's why I got the scooter. But then I also started using it sometimes for my commute to work because I got like a two mile commute to work to work. And if I don't have a lot of products to bring with me, I'll just shove everything in my backpack, slap it on and hop on the scooter. So you got this 43 year old man, you know what I'm saying? Just riding down the suburbs in his little kick scooter. <laughs> But seriously, it takes me less time to get to work on that scooter than it does in a car so, because yeah. I don't have to deal with traffic lights and stuff like that. And I just, you know, when I got it, I thought I was just going to use it, you know, just for the dog. But I found myself using that thing all the time. The range on it is good. I can't remember the specs as far as like, you know, how long the battery will last or anything like that. But I do know it has uh, three modes. One is like kind of slow, almost a beginner mode. Then you have mm -hmm. a sport then you got super sport where you can get up to 18 miles an hour so yes my dog does outrun the scooter at some point because <laughs> he's going four miles plus but yeah it's a great scooter super durable when i first got it i was roughly 253 pounds i've lost a few pounds since then i'm about 194 195 now so oh. if you're a bigger guy or girl it will carry your weight and still get up to max speed and i was concerned about that and now I'm not saying it goes faster, but it definitely picks up faster since I've lost about 50 something pounds because <laughs> it's not lugging all my big butt around. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, man. Is this the one with a 30 mile range? I, if yes, I remember right it's got right like me. 30, 31 mile range or something like that. I was trying to look, but um, yeah, man, it's just been a great product for this year, man. It's definitely a, a, like high priority on the list. And it's one of those things where I love it, but now that I've been a scooterer, is that a, is that a word? Scooterer? I'm a scooterer. <laughs> I kind of want to upgrade now. I want to get a you know like one with a suspension because that's the one thing that I do wish it had was like at least a rear or front suspension. Let's talk about cell phones real quick. Just uh, switch gears. Um, one of my favorite phones from this year, I think a lot of people will say this is the Pixel Seven Pro. I have it under a cover actually, but um, the Pixel Seven Pro, I think is what the Pixel 6, Pixel 6 Pro should have been when it came out. And I think this is, you know, the best all around Android phone right now. And I think some people will say, nah, Samsung, you know, that kind of thing. But I think the most improved, the most, I guess, it, you know, of, of course, everybody's priorities are different, but one of, the, one of the better camera experiences, one of the better telephony experiences, I've always said that uh, in my videos where, you know, a lot of companies forget to talk about or forget to improve on the smartphone side, the phone side. And Google has always been good about the phones, phone part. And this is where the 7 Pro really comes, you know, comes to play. And I really enjoyed it. The camera is amazing. I mean, it has idiosyncrasies to the zoom and all that. Um, the display is amazing. The battery life, much better than before. Um, the fact that they moved the volume button and the power button down a, a smidgen from the last years, 
makes a huge difference. Last time I had to like stretch and all that kind of such, but this is an amazing phone. Right now, if you're shopping for it, they're just offering a lot of just straight up cashbacks on Google Store and Best Buy and such. I've seen it go down this week by 150 bucks, just cashback. Um, so, you know, and but the better buy, I think, if you're really going for a new phone, if you're going for a Pixel, would be just a 7. I think that would be a fantastic deal. I think they're going down like by a couple hundred bucks. Um, or if you really can go there, go for the Pixel 6a. If you have to have a Pixel phone, the 6a goes for 300 bucks. You can't get any better than that, really. What's next on your list, man? Dude, I got another one of those things that you don't know you need until you got it. <laughs> it is the Eufy Smart Dropbox. You know what that is? Oh, it's like a parcel box for UPS and FedEx and it's lockable. Man. Yeah. Okay, in my profession, I do get a lot of packages, probably more than the average person. But even still, before I started doing YouTube, I was getting a lot of packages because I have an addiction. What do they call it? Gas? Gear <laughs> acquisition syndrome? <laughs> Where I just I just get on Amazon, uh, on Amazon and I just start clicking, man, and things just show up at my house in these beautiful boxes. So until the Dropbox, you know, the, the UPS or whoever would come and just drop it behind like this post. And that was cool, but it's still out there in the elements. It might blow away if it's light or, you know, cat might drag it off or something like that. But this Eufy Smart Dropbox, when you walk up to the door, you hear this robotic lady say, hey, press the button and put your stuff in here. And you just press the button. It pops open. You drop it in there. But they have to close it manually. And most of the times they do, like 99.9% .9 of the time they close it manually. And now your stuff is in there and you, you can't just walk by and hit the button again. You have to punch in a code and mm -hmm. you can give the code to UPS, FedEx or Amazon and they have their own code. So you get an alert on your phone that says UPS, just open your new stuff box. I absolutely love that. And I can't believe I was doing Amazon that long without a UP smart drop box. You know what would supplement that really well? I think now that you're talking about it, um, I also tested this this year. It's called, the, it's also from Eufy. So guys, uh, this is the Eufy Cam 3 with the Homebase 3 as well. It's all updated and it, the cameras are awesome because they're solar powered and you don't need to get a like a separate solar panel. It's built in. It's something that Eufy has done before in the past and they just upgraded it and also com uh, combine it with their Homebase 3, which is like a hard drive that stores everything offline so you don't have to pay like, you know, fees for storage on the cloud or anything like that. You can if you want to. Uh, but you can also upgrade the drives. You can externally export all your archives to a NAS or something if you like. So, and I think this will go great with the storage box, like as a security cam. So you can just point it at whatever, at the front of your house and you know, wherever you want to. And this thing is amazing. I really like it. And it's 4K. Next up on my list is, is not new tech. It's just something I got into this past year, which is the okay. Samsung, what does it say? Galaxy Smart Tag. And it actually has a dog canine tooth bite mark in it <laughs> because this one is actually on his leash my fast giant puppy dog uh i really love these things i have i have one on my leash i have one on his other collar and i have one on my keys the wife has one on her keys and there's one somewhere else but we have them because sometimes we lose stuff and it's easy to find it because it's kind of connected via your phone bluetooth or wi-fi if you get the the good one you know like this is the cheap one i, I don't even know how to describe this stuff i'm supposed to be a tech guy but i don't know a lot of tech stuff <laughs> That's why this video is going to be a dud, guys. You got the you got the the more expensive one, then you got the cheap one, right? That's that's my tech for the day. But uh, they all work generally the same way. You can kind of find stuff. Like one time, I ended up dropping his. Uh, this is his poop bag bag. So I carry <laughs> I carry his so poop bag. Those stains are not actual. That's not stains, right? That's um. <laughs> It's camouflage, man. So I dropped sure. it, right? And then when I got home, I realized it wasn't on the leash anymore. And what did I do? I picked, I pulled out my phone and tracked it via the smart tag. And That's since cool. it has this button on there, I was able to find it. But then since it has the button, I programmed it to open and close my garage. So I don't have to worry about going out a certain door. I can just go out my garage door on the scooter, click this once, it closes the garage. And then when I'm on my way home, I just press and hold it. It opens the garage and you can program that for a light garage, front door, whatever. So 
uh, the what is it, Galaxy Smart Tag? This is one of those other pieces of tech. Like until you actually have it and use it, and you're like, dang, how did I move through life without this thing? It's so convenient and easy to use. I know you've been reviewing a lot of speakers on your channel, um, so I'm gonna bring this one in. This is one of my favorites from the year. You can chime in anytime, Antoine. I know you had lots of speakers, and you probably have an opinion. But my favorite, and granted, I haven't tested many. It's just this past half six months has been crazy with speakers. Uh, from Tribit and you know Tron Smart and a few others, but my favorite is the Soundcore Motion Boom Plus. Is that the correct name? Yes. This thing, oh man, it's decently priced. I think it's a hundred and sixty, if I remember correctly. We'll flash the correct price in a second. But this has amazing battery. Uh, sounds pretty darn good. Not as good as the Tribit Storm uh, Stormbox Blast. Is that the proper name too? But that thing is like a, an elephant. <laughs> But this thing is so portable, it's so light, it has a carry strap and it's, and the, the IPX67, I think this one has, and it floats and everything. This is like the ideal middle ground of a portable Bluetooth speaker. So if you're looking for one, check this one out. I gotta 100% agree with everything you just said. You, like they nailed everything that someone would need with the handle and the strap the yeah. sound as far as how loud it is and how good it sounds and you got the best app on the planet soundcore does does really good on that one too yeah they really do put a lot of attention to detail into their apps too speaking of headphones from earlier i forgot to mention this this was one of my surprises surprises from the year uh it's called the uh well i'll put this in the category of my coolest tech of the year for headphones this is called the uh, urbanista los angeles and it is solar powered it will never need charging. I've used this for the whole year pretty much. This came out in January or February or something like that. I never had to plug it in once. I just have to stand outdoors and this whole solar panel at the top right here charges the whole bloody thing all the time. The sound is pretty darn good. It has app customization. The noise cancellation is also pretty darn sweet. Um, so if you're looking, I don't know what the price is for uh, right now for these because they barely go on discounts. Uh, but my hope it does on Amazon or something. So I'll link it up above and or down below and then you can check it out for yourselves. But this is one of my coolest tech from the year. Uh, it fits really good. It's not the lightest, but, and the case is pretty darn sweet. So check this out. You store it in, uh, in the case from the top here. And the reason why it's open top, it allows it to charge uh, while it's in the case. Man, that is brilliant. You just let it sit outside in the sun. All right, man, this is my last like, for the year, my my top five for the year is going to be the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. <laughs> I knew you were gonna go there. <laughs> Last year with the Galaxy Watch 4, I bought it and returned it because I was so underwhelmed and unimpressed by it because mm -hmm. I owned the Galaxy Watch 3 and I was just like, all right, man, it's just, you didn't need to do this. But then, you know, I'm one of those guys that likes to, you know, dress up with his watch. So that means I'm switching out, you know, the straps and, you know, matching it with my outfit and stuff. And then I looked at the design of the three, the yeah, the three, and realized it's not for every thing, you know, like sports or getting dressed up or something like that. And that's when I decided to take a hard look at the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. And I looked at how it was built and I said, this could be it. So I tried it out and I was just like, I want to return it because I don't need another smartwatch, but I can't return it because I love it so much. This thing <laughs> goes with everything. I've swapped out the bands to, you know, for outfits and stuff like that. So cosmetically, it's just been the best watch I've owned so far. Now, as far as function and tech, it's a smartwatch. So of course they always focus on the fitness aspect, uh, excuse me, aspect of it. And it does that extremely well. Uh, it actually has some other features where you can put your fingers on the two buttons and kind of pull it back a little bit and it gets like your bone density and bone muscular stuff like it's got a lot of stuff built in here i'm like i don't even need that but it's there i'm glad i got it just in case i want to tell somebody <laughs> you have osteoporosis <laughs> yeah like like i want to know that right now you know <laughs> so <laughs> got stuff to do man but yeah so functionally it works great as a smartwatch you know i'm just usually using it for time taking a phone call or you know, changing music or something like that. And it works great. But this has just been one of my favorite pieces of tech this year because I don't really leave it at home. I would, there is a lot of times where I would just not wear a watch because I didn't feel like I needed one or it didn't go well with what I was wearing because it was a smart watch. But this one pretty much lives on my wrist now. Yeah. And let me ask you this. There's probably like two big questions most people, potential buyers and even current owners of the old watch would ask. 
Um, what's the battery life for, for you been like? I forget about the battery life. This has been the best battery I've ever owned on a smartwatch. And I got a lot of them. Um, yeah. We're talking, and I have everything turned on, which is, you know, like the motion, the heartbeat stuff. And mm -hmm. if I do a full charge, like first thing in the morning, take it off full charge, I can go a full day plus another day and a half probably. So we're talking two and a half, almost three days. If you, on that third day, you put it into like a battery saver mode. That's pretty sweet, actually, because the old models were like, yeah, they sucked. Yeah, you got about <laughs> 10 hours, you know? Yeah, two <laughs> hours or days. It was just like a regular Apple Watch, you know, like, hey, okay. <laughs> the other question is, have you ever used it outside of a Samsung watch? Uh, Samsung phone, sorry. Because, you know, I know Samsung was pretty agnostic about, you know, some features were available through the phones only. Do you have any experience with that? No, I did not pair it uh, with the Google uh, Pixel 7 or any other non-Samsung uh, phone. Okay. Well, you're a lot of help. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm a Samsung knight. You Samsung or go home. I can tell, man. <laughs> I do have one more in my list too. Actually, yeah, I do have one more. Um, so guys, if you're also looking for fitness earbuds, one of my favorite from the year is the Shox Open Run Pro. These things are bloody fantastic. I've, I've given these out to people, I've lent this to friends. This is by far a lot of people, people's favorite, just because of the fact that it's waterproof and it's really light. The sound is pretty darn decent. They say it's, they say it's bone conduction, but it's actually really not. It's more like a couple of drivers close to your ear and it just vibrates that area. Uh, but other, other than that, the sound is good. It's priced right. I think it's 150 bucks right now for the Pro model. Uh, they have they have a regular one and it comes in all kinds of colors which is pretty darn awesome um and i also got an email today coincidentally that the open run pro is coming in the mini version which is really suitable for the ladies or people with smaller heads so uh it's my recommendation for sports earbuds oh he's well, got something on i recognize that can thing. we jump into something now like you know some surprise stuff because i want to talk about my most underrated tech from last year. I don't know if you noticed, but I look a little cooler than I did the last time I was talking, right? That's just because I got on these, just a little bit. I got on these Soundcore frames, man. I, I look fly, don't I, baby? Yeah. <laughs> do you still use them? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, okay, so this is what I wanna talk about as being my favorite things, is the wearability, because they actually look like regular glasses. Yes, they are a little bit thicker on the stem, but the other ones I've tried in other brands, they've always had this space age kind of thick, like what do you have on guy kind of look to them. But these, you know, they, they look kind of normal, you know, and they're just wearable because they feel like glasses first, like sunglasses first versus a piece of tech first. And that's why I can wear them all the time. And then as you're wearing them, you realize they play music. They're connected to your phone via Bluetooth and they're just hanging out there ready for you to talk to them or you can swipe on the uh, on the sides here to toggle your volume or uh, play and pause or take a phone call or whatever. And speaking of phone calls, these things are better than most phones on phone calls or earbuds anyways. Uh, so I've taken plenty of phone calls wearing these things. And because I don't wear prescription glasses, I've gotten all the, the lenses that have the shades like these aviators right here. But because mm -hmm. I don't wear prescription glasses, I wanted to wear them inside. All you got to do is kind of just snap the, why is it not working? It's because we're doing this video. <laughs> That's how it worked. Yeah, so basically you just pull the stems off of the front frame and you can swap out the frame to be whatever you want, like a Wayfarer type or, um, uh, you know, like they have a Rockstar type of uh, frame. And they also have different frames that you can put in clear lenses like these right here. Now, remember, I do not wear prescription glasses, but sometimes I'm in the house and I just want to walk around and now wear you my sound core frames to talk to people and listen to music. So I just look like I'm more intelligent than I really am, but it's only because <laughs> I want to have these on my ears or on my, on my face and it doesn't feel heavy or anything like that. So, man, this is so underrated and I'm really surprised that they didn't push these harder last year. But this is, I'm still using these the next year. It's just not a novelty item. This is something that just kind of moves with you. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't come out with uh, version 2.0 this year. That would have been nice, but I think it's just because it was just so underrated last year. 
Yeah, I guess. But, or maybe it's just such a niche uh, genre, you know, like with the Boses and what is the other brand? I think Sound Pete's also came out with one. They weren't, they're, they're not that really visible in the market. People don't really know they exist and they don't sell that much either. So those are amazing. I like them. And if it wasn't for prescription lenses, I'll be wearing them all the time too. Well, Will, can you get, you can get your prescription put into these, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't trust the hinges. Ah, okay. <laughs> Guys, if you're, if you're interested in these, you wear these in town, in the city, you go, wear them to work. If you're not like a risk taker, you know, if like you don't use them hard or you if you baby your stuff, these are actually perfect. I really like them too. I, I wish I can use them more often. It's sitting there all the time, but I never get to, yeah. Do you it. Know, I've actually considered, because I like these so much, these frames, uh -huh. uh, the clear frames. I actually considered getting them done in a transition lens, uh. non-prescription, because I like yeah. them so much. <laughs> I just didn't want to go spend extra money though. On your uh, topic of things I still find cool from last year or even previous years, um, I was saying just now I still kind of sort of daily my Flip 3. If you're looking at the Flip 4, I think, and just looking at the price and even with all the trade-in offers going on right now, the Flip 3, you are not missing too much except maybe for battery life and a slight bump in the camera uh, sensor quality but that's about it so if you want a cool phone if you really want something that's unique that no other phone out there has like between a fold and a flip two these kind of this is the kind of phone you want to be looking at really unless you have something to say i'm gonna move on to my other one that i think this is my daily driver. Uh, it's a Jabra 85H. I think it's a couple of years old, so I'm going a little bit further back. But this is the one that ultimately settled on. I settle on every single night when I go to bed. I just like put these on to listen to tunes or watch movies or something. Because I haven't seen a headphone where you twist it to turn it on. The controls are on the pad itself uh, and it's fabric lined and it's really nice. It's, it's not swiping, it's more like a button on the outside super comfortable the actor noise cancellation is pretty decent uh, it's probably around it's not like sony or bose level but i was put it all around like the soundcore q35 q30 level sound is amazing sound quality is pretty darn good and comfort oh man i love this thing but it still goes for like 330 bucks on amazon i was just checking it a couple of days ago i was like what to be so right. right yeah for something this old but uh the app is pretty darn good it's still supported i still get firmware updates for this thing um and it collapses to really tiny and the case is really nice as well it collapses tiny to you know to transport itself and all that kind of such but anyways let's talk about tech that we absolutely hated this year mm, that's it yes well this Thanks one is guys like a love and it. hate because if anyone follows my channel you know i absolutely love Google Stadia. I'm not a PC gamer. I'm not a console gamer. I'm a super duper casual gamer. And I did not mind paying $10 a month to have Stadia Pro. And I have built up a library over the past, what, what did it come out, like 2019? Mm -hmm. I love Stadia for the simplicity of it, or maybe the techie of it, because just through the air, I can take this controller and I can like put a little clamp on here and play on my phone. And I can play yeah. the game and I can take that same game, put it on pause. I could go upstairs into my media room and play that same game from the same starting point on my projector screen. Then I can go outside, sit on the patio, play it on my phone again or my tablet or go downstairs and play on the bedroom TV with the same controller and keep just wherever I left off. Stadia works that well. Uh, but something this is just something about Google. They decided to cancel it. <laughs> no one was complaining about it. They just said, we're tired of doing it and they're going to cancel it in January, 2023. And that is why this is the crappiest tech of all time. <laughs> it went from being a 12 to a two. <laughs> I totally agree with you. That was like one of the biggest surprises, but yet not biggest surprises and totally Google hate it for doing they hate them for doing that. Now, my least favorite tech, and I hope I don't hurt anybody's feelings, especially the maker of these. Um, I reviewed this a couple of weeks back. These are called the Super Hexa Visions. Um, they're supposedly, you know, AR, yeah, um, AR in the slight, in the loosest term of it. So the only features that is available on these um, Kickstarter glasses, and I think it's going to the market soon, is you can take pictures and videos with it. And 
that's it. <laughs> that's it. Nothing else. They promise a lot of things on their uh, ads and commercials and in their even their reviewers guide that they say they have translators and um, you know artificial intelligence recognition for objects and all that kind of things but uh, they say they keep saying oh it's in progress so I, I mean, I'm kind of bummed when I reviewed it I had this for like a couple months and they kept promising things that never happened so this is probably there's a lot of you know promise to this but there's a lot of things just missing and I this is probably the worst tech that I had to review this is 600 bucks for a camera yes it's brutal so i was telling I'm, I'm telling you guys if you see this on kickstarter or indiegogo whatever it is and you want to support it just don't it's not worth it <laughs> so um i thanks thanks for sharing man i really appreciate you um you know just going through the list together and just being here to co-host um i hey do you want to tell people about your channel i'm sure there are some people i've had when i advertise for this some people are like oh yeah we follow antoine he's cool and all that but we got some people who may not know who you are do you want to explain what you do and your channel you know that kind of thing all right well the channel name is new stuff tv on youtube just look for the icon of the big chunky guy with a big old speaker up to his ear and uh press play I got a lot of videos there for you to watch already. Just come hang out. I do uh, a lot of audio tech like earbuds, headphones, and uh, Bluetooth speakers. But every once in a while, I'll do something like a projector or, you know, smart glasses or something like that. Just different types of tech. And uh, But above all, besides being a tech guy, I'm the untechnical tech channel. So I'm going to give you a more down-to-earth and, you know, like a layman's, you know, example of what's going on with the piece of tech I have in my hand. And I just have fun doing it. So come hang out. And you dance a lot. I do dance quite a bit. I just do. There's something, I, it's something in here, like, and it just starts happening. I can't stop <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and Will and Wilson gets to see it all the time now. <laughs> yes, Wilson does see. So, and yes, there is a co-host. Uh, his name is Wilson, and he shows up from time to time. But you never see his face. He ne he doesn't like to show his face. He just likes to harass me during the. Uh, <laughs> And since this is uh, Thanksgiving season, I just want to wish you happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Antoine. Do you have anything you're thankful for, for this year? Well, first of all, I'm thankful for your friendship. Uh, we met this year, right? Yeah. That was this year. We did our first podcast or only podcast together. I really don't do much of that anymore, but I'm glad I got to meet you through that because you're a very interesting guy in a good way. I was actually telling Wilson a couple weeks ago, I don't want to make any new friends. And I'm glad you made the cutoff. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you made it by like that much, bro. <laughs> as long as I'm on your speed dial, that counts. That's okay. You're in there, dude. But also, I'm I'm very grateful for my, uh, my mental state and my peace of mind. I've kind of built the life and lifestyle that allows me to go to sleep at night and sleep until, you know, it's time to wake up. You know, and I feel mm. good at the end of the day about what I've done. So and that's not easy for everybody to say. And I'm just really grateful to have that. Awesome, man. Thank you. And yeah, I'm thankful for it's been a good year. I would say since COVID, we came out of COVID. It's just been a good year for everybody. And I enjoy being outdoors again. That's been really good. And having um, a baby on the way is also something really, really exciting that I've been thankful for. And uh, for a wife who's been supportive of, you know, just the changes in our family and our household and this channel she's always been supportive of what i do and you know that she's like she was very excited when she heard that you're coming on board and she's like yeah awesome um so little things like that thankful for you guys for watching and all you know just supporters from both channels and beyond people who watch everything we really love you guys and we appreciate everything um don't forget to again check out antoine's new stuff tv channel if you're not yet a subscriber go subscribe to his stuff and also don't forget to subscribe to mine <laughs> um and also remember to thumbs up if you like this video and come back for more at, at any time you like we are here to help you guys out as consumers we tell it like it is and because you deserve it and we're not like swayed by all the free stuff we get or whatever we get paid for you know we want to tell it the way it is so Thank you guys for watching. Remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what? The world needs it more than ever and it starts with you. I love you all very much. Peace out. Adios. <laughs>